All right, all right, all right, all right. This is Mr. G, Family and Consumer Science. This episode is about breakfast and breakfast items. I just want to say, first up, that the beginning of the course has been going fantastic. I'm very proud of all of you absorbing what can, absorbing all that fabulous information about safety, food handling, cross-contamination. We've talked about that. We've kind of got that down, that those are standards. we got to live by those standards. we got to cook by those standards. And a standard is something, an expectation of quality. You guys are quality. This show is quality. It's time for episode two of breakfast. So let's start with some terms. Please get a piece of paper out, ladies and gentlemen, when you're watching this, as always, get a piece of paper out, and let's write on that upper left-hand corner, let's write on there your first and last name, underneath that, the period, the date, and right on the top middle line, write down breakfast videos. This is Mr. G, coming at you in Family and Consumer Science, all my creative foods and my culinary skills students, welcome, welcome for people wanted just to enjoy and maybe learn some recipes, here we go. First thing we got to talk about is the function of ingredients. Number one, let's put down eggs. When we're cooking with eggs, they, they can be used by themselves for some dishes. And eggs are also used in a lot of other dishes and the definition of eggs would be the main binding agent or holding your product together. Eggs can hold together a lot of different things. Breads, potato dishes, all sorts of stuff. Pastries, got to have some egg in there. So let's put down egg. It helps with the binding or holding of foods together. Next thing is flour. Now flour is the main equals, the main structure of most products that you use flour in. Yes, flour can also be used as a thickening agent. Jot that down. But it's also used in breakfast items as structure. The main structure of a product uses flour. There's a lot of different types of flour. There's your basic white flour or processed bleach flour. There's also almond flour, rice flour, a lot of different flours. Flours have become very, very popular. The different types of flour, um, everything from gluten allergies, uh, avoiding that by using different types of flour. But flour is just an amazing, amazing thing. Let's write down flour, structure of ingredients. Number three, milk or a liquid. You need a liquid and you need milk in products, okay? You need that to help give moisture to the product you're making. You need some moisture in pancakes, in crepes. Sometimes you put a little bit of milk in eggs as well. Number four of ingredients, butter. Now butter in oils will help your product stretch, okay? Makes things stretch out a little bit, okay? We need a little elasticity in our goods. And a little oil will do that. Different types of oil. Let's write underneath that types of oil. We have an oil that's called saturated fat oils. And the definition of saturated fat that I want you to write down 
It means it's solid at room temperature. You take some butter out, lard out, Crisco out, you leave it out on the counter, it's not going to melt. It's going to remain solid. That's a definition of a saturated fat. Not a good fat. Not good for you. Tasty, yes. Health benefits, no. Try to stay away from those. But Mr. G, what other kind of, what other kind of fats or butters can I use in my baked goods? Well, and to put on pans as well to, to non-stick. Olive oil is a is a is a polyunsaturated fat that will not be solid at room temperature. Made from olives, much healthier for you to use. The only drawback to using olive oil is it doesn't take high heat very well, like super high heat, like 350 degrees, 360 degrees. Tough to deep fry in olive oil. But besides that, using that in baked products, uh, in pancakes, muffins, breads, olive oil is the way to go. You also have coconut, coconut butter, coconut oil made from coconut. A little higher in the fat content, Super sweet, super good for you. Lots of good stuff in that coconut butter and oil. Avocado butter, mmm. Avocado butter, avocado oil, absolutely. Very healthy, a little more expensive. That's why you, more of your vegetable oils and cotton oil is a little less expensive, but spend that extra dollar, spend that extra couple, and buy a good oil, one that's not solid at room temperature. Number five, baking soda. Baking soda is probably one of the most universal, not universal, but a, you can use baking soda for so many different things. So many. In culinary, we use baking soda, and let's write this down, as a rising agent. Helps things rise. Okay? Okay. Baking soda can also be used for cleaning, scrubbing of pans. You put that with some vinegar and it will foam up like those old days when we made those uh, volcanoes. Baking soda can be used for that. Baking soda can also be diluted in water and, drank, and, dr and consumed or drunk or drank, if that's the proper English. And that will help you alleviate heartburn, acid reflux, it's a neutralizer. Baking soda is very good for that as well. You can brush your teeth with baking soda. You can make a paste with paste with water. Make a little paste. You can put it on a bug bite or a bee sting and that will help heal and draw all the poisons out. Oh my God, is there anything else baking soda can't do? Can't do a lot, but you know what else it can do? can help put out fires. You put a little, you have a grease fire, a little baking soda on top of that. I'll put that out. It's a deodorizer. Put it in your fridge. Helps keep things fresh. Keep it outside. Help keep things fresh and clean. <clears throat> I got to say that baking soda is probably right up there as an incredible product. Number six, baking powder. <clears throat> now, baking soda is stronger than baking powder. Baking powder is used in baking as a rising agent. It is not as strong as baking soda, but still does a lot of the things that baking soda does. So let's put down baking powder, a rising agent that's not as strong as baking soda. Number seven, salt. Salt, and when we cook, is used as an anti-rising agent. you got to put something in your baked goods or something in your breads to slow down or equalize out the baking soda. So the recipe will call for some measurement of salt, and that will regulate the baking soda. So that's why using proper measurements are so big and important to have. Um, yeah, so ingredients, done. Um, eight, heat sources. When we're cooking on top of a stove, we're using what's called, write this down, a heat source, conduction. 
That is when a pan, here's a pan, imaginary pan, here's the burner. I'm putting that pan onto a hot surface. The heat is conducting through that, warming or heating up that pan. Conduction heat, very, very good. And to go along with conduction heat for number nine, guys, let's write down carry over cooking. Carry over cooking is defined as food that continues to cook after it comes off the heat. Okay, something may be done when you get it off that heat, but if you cooked it too much, it's going to continue to cook. So you got to kind of figure out when's the right time to take, let's say, scrambled eggs off maybe a little bit before it's done because you know it's going to continue to cook. If you keep something in a hot pan, it will continue to cook. That's why a lot of recipes call for removing it from the heat source. Egg dishes. Number 10. Let's write down egg dishes. Number 10. Scrambled eggs. How do we make that? Let's write a little of that. You scramble eggs, preferably at room temperature. Scramble it. A basic rule maybe a tablespoon of water, milk, or some sort of cream added to two eggs when you scramble them will give them more loft and more fluffiness. You want to, number 11, very important, you want to preheat your skillet or your saute pan before you add oil. Okay, so let's put it down. When you're cooking, number 12, preheat your skillet. 13, once your skillet is preheated, that is when you add the oil. So you have layers now. Hot pan, oil on top of that. The oil will now not sink into the pan because it's been preheated. You got that level. In number 14, you want to add cold foods to hot pan, preheated, and then oil added onto it. Okay, so that's the steps. Preheat the pan, put oil on there, preheat that, and then add your scrambled eggs to that. Number 15, omelets. Very popular dish. To cook with eggs, definition of omelet, number 15 would be eggs that has kind of hardened up or firmed up in a pan without scrambling it and then folded over, perhaps with some fillings inside to get like a nice half moon. Nice omelets. Excellent, excellent omelets. Then we have number 16. Let's write 16A over easy. 16B over medium. 16C over hard. 16D, sunny side up. Same principles apply. Same principles. 16E, poached egg. What's a poached egg? A poached egg is cooking eggs, write this down, in simmering water at 190 degrees, which is a little below the boiling point of 212. You will take an egg, you will, in a cup, and you will gently place it into steaming water, not boiling because the bubbles will break the, the bubbles will break the yolk and the egg in the water. So you want it steaming. You also want to add about a teaspoon of vinegar to the water when you're poaching an egg. And again, poaching is cooking something in water. Poached eggs, you're cooking that in water, simmering with a little bit of vinegar. And then a technique might be to take your water that is simmering, get a little tornado going, a little swirl going. And then when you add the egg to the water, 
the swirl or the vortex, if you would, will keep that poached egg together. Poached eggs take about two to three minutes to cook in simmering. And as a general rule, a poached egg should be, egg should be cooked almost all the way through. There are some dishes where they want that running a little bit. I'm a big fan of making sure that egg is cooked all the way through. We know what sunny side up is. Okay, you're not turning it over. You're adding that egg onto there. And uh, you're letting it cook until the yolk firms up. Over easy, you're placing it down like a sunny side up egg, giving it about 30 seconds for the whites to congeal, from turn from clear to white. Then you're going to flip that over. If you want it over medium, you're going to hang on to it a little bit longer on the pan. Touch it a little bit. Make sure it's firming up over hard, that egg yolk is firm. Big, big fan of that. All right, so now let's go on to the next thing we're going to make, pancakes. Here is the recipe for pancakes. Write this down, 17, pancake recipe. One cup of flour, not sifted. Two tablespoons granulated sugar, two tablespoons baking powder, as we know is a rising agent, one teaspoon salt, anti-rising agent. You're going to take that, you're going to put it into a mixing bowl, dry ingredients. Separate mixing bowl now are your wet ingredients. One cup milk, one beaten egg, two tablespoons of oil. That are your wet ingredients. The usual the simple principle of baking will always be dry ingredients in one mixing bowl, wet ingredients in the other mixing bowl, then combine. We want to do that so all your dry ingredients are uniformed in there. All the baking powder and salt is evenly distributed. Same thing if your wet ingredients. So when you put them together, you will have an equally distributed batter. Again, we need to two tablespoons of oil, if I haven't already said that. And if you want to add a little dash of this to that, remember less is more when we're adding spices and flavorings. Maybe a dash of cinnamon. Maybe. Maybe a little brown sugar. Hmm. Again, now we want to do what? As we discussed earlier, you want to preheat your pan with nothing on it at about six or seven. Put your hand over the top, it's feeling hot. Then you're gonna add your healthy butter to it or oil to it. Preheat the oil on the heated pan. When that's done, then you're gonna take, I believe it's about a fourth of a cup of your batter onto your preheated pan and then when the bubbles start popping up onto it, you'll see bubbles start coming out from it. That is when it is ready to turn. Or that's also a time when you can add your, your, seat, your flavorings to it. Maybe a few blueberries. Maybe some strawberries. Maybe some chocolate chips. But we're going to go healthy. We're going to add some blueberries to that. Okay? And when those blueberries or new berries are bubbling, then you turn it over. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't take that spatula and push down on that pancake. No, you're going to push all the air out of the pancake. Very sad. You don't want a Frisbee. You want a pancake. Let that fluff up. If it looks good all the way around, slice open it. Look at the thickest part. Just because a pancake looks done on the outside does not necessarily that that batter is cooked on the inside. So you do a couple, you can kind of sell and feel and look at how it's going to look if, and how it should look, but you want to check the inside to make sure that we have no batter in there. Let's talk some crepes. French, a French, a French dish, a French word. Number 18, crepe. What's a crepe, you ask? It is a thin version of a pancake that is more egg-based than flour-based. So, how are we going to make it? Here's the recipe. 18 crepes. Let's write this down. 
You're going to sift, sift one cup of flour. If we have a sifter, if you don't have a sifter, you can use a strainer. You want to shake it on through, and that gets all the lumps out, makes it very, very light and fluffy. You don't want to do that during pancakes. You want to do it during crepes. So we're going for a different texture. Okay? One fourth of a teaspoon of salt, just a pinch. A little bit of salt in there for some flavor. We have no rising agent in this, but with just a little bit of salt will help it along. Separate mixing bowl. Let's talk wet ingredients. Three eggs. Three eggs. Is there bacteria on eggshells? You bet there is. Let's be careful how we're going to crack that. Let's make sure we got no, get no little eggshell in there. Three eggs. Scrambled. Not cooked, but just scrambled, yeah? Two cups of milk. One teaspoon of vanilla extract, optional. You're going to mix that together, too. Then you're going to take your wet ingredients, just like pancakes and all the things that we bake with, put it into your dry ingredients. Yeah? Mix, mix, mix. Heat up that pan. Heat up the oil. And then you want to use the shape of your saute pan, that circle, and thin, thin, thin layer. Without making a pancake, we're making an elegant, crispy, delicious crepe. Around the edges, about two minutes, you should be able to lift that up. It should be paper thin and lay it down on the other side. Crispy, elegant, love, love, love the crepes. But before we put it on the pan, I'm sorry, before we put it on the pan, I want you to add to your mixed batter of the crepes two teaspoons of melted butter. I just kind of saw that. I'm like, oh, got to get a little sweetness in there. Let's get some melted butter in there as well. Next thing we're going to work with is a muffin, a muffin base recipe to make muffins with. F first thing you want to do, first thing you want to do, preheat your oven 425 degrees hot. It's important to have, it's important to have a very hot oven when you're making muffins. That's going to cause it to rise quickly and get that nice high dome on the top. Here's the recipe for a basic muffin recipe. Two cups flour, two thirds of a cup sugar, one half a cup, one half a teaspoon salt, one tablespoon baking powder. Set that aside. Liquids, two thirds cup milk, one half cup oil, one egg, one teaspoon vanilla extract, wet into wet, dry into dry, mix, that didn't make any sense, dry into wet, two separate things when we're making those beautiful muffins. Muffin tin, lined and oiled, about halfway up, and that's when you can add your toppings, three or four, blueberries, strawberries, some chocolate, in the oven, about 10 to 15 minutes, or when you can take your fork or a toothpick and put it in and it comes out clean. Wow. Last thing I want to talk about, potatoes, hash brown potatoes, shredded potatoes. Take those potatoes, shred the potatoes to a shredder. Take that, put it into a strainer with cold water and rinse the potato shreds out. Squeeze out all that water. Squeeze out all that water. Squeeze out all that water, prepare that pan, a little bit of seasonings. Some people might throw a little bit of flour in there, might throw an egg in there, but to get a nice, true, crispy hash brown, you can just use hash browns, shredded, nice and light, a little bit of oil, and they'll crisp up beautifully. What's the difference between a home fry and a hash brown, Mr. G? Ah, home fries is you're cutting them up into small little dice, six-sided dice, it's really small. You want to move them small so they're cooking the pan. Big pieces of potato will not cook down all the way in the pan. So you want to get them nice and super small. What a day, what a day, what a day, what a day, what a day. Get your elbows off the table. Mr. G's Culinary Skills, Creative Foods, Family Consumer Science, 
We're going to be making some breakfast. Let's keep our standards where they need to be. Standards for doing this. Correct measurements. Proper food handling. Standards would be mix well. A standard would be read and understand the recipe before you get started. Standard. Mise en place. Interesting word, meaning everything in its place before you start cooking. You got to gather up all your ingredients first. Make sure your measurements are right. That's mise en place. Then you're going to combine those ingredients, technique, or stages of production. Okay? Stages of production meaning A, I'm gathering my ingredients. B, I'm combining and measuring. Another stage of production, preparing and preheating. Another stage of production, cooking. You follow those stages of production down, your food should come out fabulous. Wow, this half an hour went by fast. I hope I got all my ingredients right. We'll go over them when we talk, but I think I got them all right. You guys are awesome. Episode two, breakfast. Yum. Is there other things to eat besides breakfast or besides what I got you? Absolutely. Yogurts, parfaits, fruits, cereal. But you want to line that body up with some good, low-fat, high-nutrient stuff to get that morning started off correctly. This is Mr. G, Family and Consumer Science Television, Episode 2. Let's make some breakfast. To your plate, to 